Chantal has been prescribed virtually every drug available for depression at near toxic doses. So this is Efexor, Dilpril, Lobutrin, Imovine, Clonazepam. So they work, they're not completely. Well, there was a time when they did work completely, but not now. She was hospitalized for over a year and a half and had 65 electroshock treatments, but nothing has worked for long. Well, I want to uh, again thank uh, Chantal, and I, I noticed Dr. Peter Jacoby, who is actually Chantal's doctor, and, and, and tells me that uh, as recently as today, uh, she has maintained this progress. She was remarkable in that she was actually back at work within one month of the treatment. That certainly hasn't been the case for all of our, our patients, but she certainly um, had an immediate and a sustained benefit. Now, you will have observed in that short clip that the surgery involved um, her having a head frame which allows very great stability in terms of using the imaging to anchor exactly where these little electrodes are going to be positioned. This is um, an image of the very fine hair wires being uh, inserted in to exactly the targeted spots. And this is just a schematic to show how you need a pacemaker, uh, a stimulator, which is actually just implanted under the clavicle. And this is on all the time. This is a battery-driven device that sends a low voltage to constantly stimulate this area of the brain. Now, this is actually how the surgeons know that they've struck the right place. You can see the target right down to this anterior cingulate area in each of these uh, patients. And just to follow the uh, way neuroimaging uh, has helped, we continued to use the PET scan uh, technology with this uh, work. And again, these are uh, only five subjects at the beginning here, but you can see this cingulate area 25 is again overactive in the depressed state and with treatment it changes from the red color to blue um, now with very small numbers of patients so we, we haven't yet looked at the larger uh, sample but there's a remarkable consistency in what we've seen with the various medication treatments and indeed in some of the work with the psychotherapies 
as well as with deep brain stimulation. And what I'm showing you here is that we um, are, uh, at this point, we've actually uh, operated on 18 people, but we have results that we've presented at scientific meetings of 12. And very simply, a score of almost 25 is a medium to severe level of depression. And if you look over a week, over two weeks, 12 weeks, 26 weeks, you see that the scores come down steadily. Um, I might say that what we've learned as the sample has enlarged is that about two-thirds of our people have done extremely well and one-third have not. So the challenge for us is to really understand how we can better predict um, the right patients for this treatment and indeed for other treatments. But I think the important uh, both psychiatry and neurosurgery uh, issue to, to think about beyond the surgery is that what I call triple therapy. Psychiatrists are used to medications, to some form of psychotherapy, but this is actually an extra dimension um, where we actually have a stimulator that at some times may need turned up or turned down. Um, in simple terms, this is a balancing of um, energy activation, if you like, um, with uh, other aspects of the treatment. Uh, we have observed that in the majority of patients, we've been able to drop the medications that they have been on. And we've also, and I think Rob uh, made this point uh, in another part of the interview, that he had had different types of psychotherapy before. And he was too flat and uh, almost moribund to make use of them. But after the brain stimulation, he could be an active participant in the therapy and uh, the importance of family involvement and indeed in his case and others, the going back to work. Now this is actually the last uh, slide I'm going to show you, but what I'm showing you here is how in an individual person, their, their rating of their the zero would be absolutely no depressive symptoms. And you can see how this person fluctuated over the first year, the green, uh, squares are where the medication, sorry, where the stimulator um, was adjusted, sometimes up, sometimes down. Um, in the blue arrows in three cases here are going back to work. And Rob was one of the, these uh, individuals here. And you can see how the stimulator was adjusted a number of times. This person was able to go back to work. Um, these purple arrows reflect uh, dropping in medication. Because we're interested in trying to understand from a scientific perspective, we haven't added new medicines or new treatments in the course of this. We've only looked at the stimulator and taken away uh, uh, other medicines. Uh, and as uh, was mentioned earlier, um, this publication uh, in the journal Neuron actually caught world attention um, about the whole issue of being able to target a specific brain region and either immediately or in a more delayed way see a gradual improvement uh, in people who really had not been able, and I should just finish by saying that everybody uh, in the group had had multiple treatments. You heard Chantal talk about her uh, electroconvulsive treatments, um, Rob and others, uh, would say the same in terms of that we required at least five failed treatments, but often 50 would have been a closer um, number. So it, it certainly is, is striking how things have changed. So I'm going to stop at this point. I, I thank you for the opportunity to, to make this presentation, and I'm very pleased to take questions. Thank you.